Well, Merry Christmas. Wow, it is hard to see you all. That's pretty profound. Thank you, Estelle, for narrating that. I'm going to pray, and we're going to share, I think, the most important story ever. I'm not talking about Avatar, the way of water. I'm talking about Jesus Christ, his birth. So let's pray. God, thank you for who you are. I thank you for the fact that you became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood, that you became like us, to be with us, that you gave yourself a name, Emmanuel, which means God with us. So whatever we're feeling, whatever we came in here experiencing, a snowstorm, maybe a storm in a relationship, a storm in finances, Lord, that you are a God who knows us, who's pursuing us and loves us. Amen. Well, Christmas, so often we celebrate a lot of things, don't we? Like I know for my children, my kids, Friday was a a celebratory day. When those kids left their classrooms, I've never seen their faces like that as they ran so like fast to the edge of the schoolyard saying, we have two weeks off. Right, kids? Yes, right? You're celebrating Christmas break. But maybe you're celebrating the fact that for my kids, there's expectation for Christmas when they look under that tree and they say, what is this? As they're shaking the life out of all those gifts. But what about you? What are you celebrating this year? Maybe for adults, it's another year gone. Maybe it's celebrating holidays. Maybe it's celebrating being with loved ones. Maybe for grandparents, it's celebrating the fact that all their kids will be under one roof this Christmas. See, Christmas is the largest celebration around the world each year. Like other holidays get one single day, but Christmas actually gets an entire month. You ever thought about that? It gets one twelfth of every year dedicated to one holiday. You can't miss it. You can't escape it. Christmas is here. I had a friend who posted a video just recently on Facebook, and he's in Thailand. He's at a mall. And then he goes, I cannot believe I'm in a mall in Thailand listening to a Christmas carol in English. Look at this amazing Christmas tree. So you can't miss it. You can't deny it. Maybe if you drive home and you see the Tree of Hope downtown by the Landmark Center or the nativity set on the buildings, maybe you're driving by Richard's house and you see the nativity set. Like, you cannot miss Christmas. If you think about it, it's pretty simple. A simple, unassuming birth of a peasant boy 2,000 years ago in the Middle East has caused a lot of commotion, has stirred up a lot in our world that even his birthday causes traffic jams. You may have never realized the fact that every time you check your calendar or you refer to a date or you write a date down, that you are using Jesus as a reference point in your life. Whether or not you even believe in Jesus or not, whatever, whether you put your faith and trust in him or not, it doesn't matter because whenever you put a date down or check a calendar or celebrate someone's birthday, like Emma's today. That's right. That you are actually using Jesus as a reference point. Because of Jesus, human history has been divided into B.C. and A.D., which B.C. really means before Christ, and A.D. really is a Latin word that, word that means in the year of the Lord, that every other event in human history has been dated by Jesus. Like even your birthday is marked by his birthday. See, on that night 2,000 years ago, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and nothing seemed any different than any other night. But they had this unassuming reality that this night was going to shape and change human history. And if you have your Bibles in a dark theater, I'd love for you to go to Luke chapter 2, verse 1. And we're going to read the Christmas story. We'll have a couple, few reflections on it. 
and we'll sing some classic Christmas carols. But Luke chapter 2, verse 1 says, In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus, the whole empire should be registered. So everyone went down to be registered, each to his own town. Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth and Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family line of David, to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. Then she gave birth to her firstborn son. And she wrapped him tightly in cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room, no guest room available for them. In the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping a watch at night over the flock. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. For look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the city of David, a Savior is born for you, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with angels praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven. And peace on earth to people he favors. When the angels had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. And after seeing them, they reported the message that they were told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary was treasuring these things in her heart, and meditating on them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard, which were just as they had been told. Now, I want to look at this one verse tonight. If you have Bibles and you have a pen, highlight it. It says, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that all the people that will... That news of great joy that will be for all the people. The angel says that Christmas should be a time of joy, of actually great happiness for all the people. Like, do you ever think that and go, really? Like, I was at the mall a couple days ago, and um, it did not feel very joyful. But for many people, it feels more like a hassle than a source of joy and happiness. That Christmas seems like a source of stress, a source of pressure. For some, it feels like a duty, not delight. See, regardless of your background, regardless of your religion, regardless of your problems or circumstances, that Christmas, whether you like it or not, is going to be the best news that you're going to get this Christmas. That Christmas is a special gift for you, that it's God's gift for you and for me, for your grandkids, for my children, for your neighbors. It's that Jesus was born to change the world, but actually to change your world, to change me and to change you. He was born to be with us. Now, I'd love for us to think just briefly for a second about this gift. Because so often, I think a lot of us at Christmas, in the darker days, in the darker season, we feel like God isn't with us. Do you ever wonder why that is? Like, do you want to know, I think, what the, what's the biggest thief, the biggest robber of joy this Christmas? It's what the angel said to the shepherds. It said, don't be afraid. There's a thing called fear. The fear of the unknown, or maybe the fear of the known. Like my emotions and your emotions are susceptible to all kinds of influences. And so often they're so unreliable that sometimes the worst advice we can give someone is to say to them, just do what you feel. Do what you feel. (laughs) Like, our feelings might not be right. Like, our emotional state could be the result of of memories, 
of trauma we've experienced over other Christmases. There could be hormones, it could be medicine, it could be food, it could be lack of sleep, it could be tension in a family or a relationship or finances. It could be just fear. See, when I'm anxious about things, which happens often in my life, I'm reminded that fear often is just false evidence appearing real. Just false evidence. It's just lies. That I might feel like God is not near this Christmas, but that's not true. It's about maybe worrying about the things that won't come true, but you're still worrying about them if you're like me. See, God came to earth at Christmas to remind you that wherever you're at in this theater, that no matter where you are, that the Bible says in Psalm 139 that where can I flee from your presence? I can never escape it. See, you may not feel like that, but God is with you. He is with you. He is for you. When I named my firstborn son, I gave him a middle name like a lot of people give their kids middle names. And when it came to a middle name, it was a huge debate. Right? I was like, I want to be Beckett Colby Milton. Right? <laughs> right? I want to be known that he's my son. But for, for whatever reason, we named him after his his papa is Beckett Lewis Milton. It's not just his grandpa, but his great-grandpa was named Lewis. You see, we give middle names to honor a relative, but also to show where someone has been from, what their history, their, their genealogy is like. But God, when he sent Jesus to earth, become like us. He gave him a name. That name is Emmanuel. He commanded that he be called this. That really means God with us. That's no wonder the shepherds were told this, don't be afraid, do not be afraid, because so often I think for me is that I lose the fear when God comes near. When I'm aware of how near Jesus is to me in proximity to my pain and my problems. See, God's presence this Christmas can trump our panic. And some of us in this room may have been abandoned in life by a spouse, by a parent, by your children, by the people you thought were your friends. Everyone has faced pain and heartache and rejection in some way. But we celebrate this year that Jesus was born and that God gave him a name among a lot of names but it's Emmanuel, God with us, God with you. Regardless of how you feel. That he came into this world becoming flesh, becoming human, becoming an infant, becoming fragile, becoming breakable, becoming killable. So that God would never abandon you and I. See, it says in the Bible that God says, I will never leave you or forsake you. One of the greatest promises in the Bible is found in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. And it says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And the rivers will not overwhelm you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched and the flame will not burn you. See, I don't know what difficulty you're experiencing. What fire is scorching your life? Maybe just walking in indigo on a Sunday afternoon. Maybe it's buying last-minute gifts for the person who's impossible to buy for. But maybe it's the death of a loved one. See, I don't know what you're experiencing this year. I don't know what the drowning you're feeling like right now is. But God knows about it. And he cares about it. And he understands it. And he is going through it with you because he is God with us. 
I shared a story a few weeks ago about a tradition I've tried and tried and tried to bring about my family. And in my house, when we celebrate a birthday, it means one single thing, a cake. Right? I've never been to a birthday party without a cake. Maybe once with a pie. Right? But did that even really count? See, in my house, a birthday is celebrated by one special cake. It's the most majestic cake of all cakes. It's a Dairy Queen cake. Classic ice cream cake. Not one of those fancy blizzard cakes, right? Some of you fancy people. This is like an old school classic ice cream cake. Vanilla, fudge, little cookie parts, chocolate, the gross icing that tastes amazing. That's an ice cream cake for us. But remember years ago, I said, I want to start a different tradition. And on Christmas, I want to actually celebrate by buying a cake or making a cake. And so I went down to the Dairy Queen and I, and I bought a cake. And I was like, can you write this on there? And she's like, okay, come back tomorrow. I'll write it on there. But what do you want? Because, you know, they take the little notepad. And they're like, tell me, what do you want on it? I'm like, okay, I want it to say happy birthday Jesus on it. And she looks at me. And she looks up again, and she goes, um, happy birthday, Jesus. I was like, no, that's, I don't know anybody named that. But I know someone named Jesus. And she's like, oh. I was like, it's Jesus' birthday. Right? And she's like, uh, I guess so. <laughs> right? And I remember buying that cake the next day and bringing it to my friend's house. Right, because we were, my kids were really little back then. This first time I did this, and we I put it on the table. I remember my friend Jeff was like, "What is this? <laughs> what is this?" I said, "Jeff, this is Jesus' birthday. Hello, and we're gonna celebrate this." I put a candle in the middle, and we went around. We sang "Happy Birthday to Jesus," and it started something. A moment where it wasn't just a Christmas Eve service, it wasn't just rushing through something, it was actually celebrating the fact that Jesus came into the world and to actually make it so human for us. I would love for us, we're not doing a Christmas Eve service. I hope we do one next year, and the year after that, and the year after that. But in today's fast pace, so often we, f- we quickly forget all the good things that God has done for us. They just move on to the next thing. That for years and years and years and years for me, I remember just rushing through cr- three Christmas Eve services to get home because I'm so famished, right? And just eating some app- appetizers and having a drink and setting up all the Christmas scenes for everyone. See, I would love for us as a Christmas, as a church, to to establish a celebration in your homes. A birthday party for Jesus. For family or close friends to pause and review God's grace in your life. To recommit to knowing and loving him better this coming year. That I don't know where you're at in your life with Christ, with Jesus, but he's a God who came to be with you. But he didn't just come to be with you. He came to live and die and rise again for you and your brokenness and your sin and my sin. To give us a brand new way to live. To be redeemed and restored. But as a church, I'd hope that every year that I would love in my family to ask a couple questions when we do this awkward thing where we sing happy birthday to Jesus with a birthday cake. And that we'd ask these questions like this. What from this past year are you thankful to God for? Like, what are you thankful for? I was telling someone this recently, I'm so thankful that this church has grown. I'm so thankful for you people becoming friends, becoming family, sitting in my living room, praying for me, giving gifts to my children. I am so thankful for how God has showed up in incredible, tangible ways this year. That's just one way I'm thankful But asking this other question is, how will you grow closer to Jesus next year? I love Narnia. 
I love when Lucy looks at Aslan. She goes, Aslan, have you grown bigger? And he goes, every year you grow older, I should grow bigger in your life. And unfortunately, in the Christian world, that doesn't happen. But how can you let God grow bigger and deeper in your life next year? You see, as a church, as we celebrate Christmas, as we celebrate that God became a light that illuminated all of our lives when we follow him, how can we choose to be thankful to him for all he's done and expect so much of what he's going to do for the next year in our, in our walk with him? Let me bring the band back up here as I close us out. But generations will come and go. That statistically they say presents will come and go. Actually, about six months after you get the gift, it will be gone. But in a world where everything changes, the stability of God allows us to face the problems today and the inevitable problems we'll face tomorrow. The problems that some of us will face of a death of a loved one, of a, a wrong diagnosis, unemployment, marriage issues, family conflict, financial stress, and all other sorts of stresses and strains. But no matter where you are at at Christmas, this Christmas, I hope and pray as a church that we would try celebrating something that will never fade, that will never leave you or abandon you, never forsake you. And his name is Jesus. He's Emmanuel. He is God with us. Let's pray. God, I thank you for your presence in this space, in our life. I thank you for all the ways that you've moved powerfully in the last year in the life of this church, but in my life, in my family's life. Lord, I pray that you would grow us next year in depth, in grace, in truth. Father, I pray we'd celebrate you this Christmas, not just today, not just on Christmas Eve, but Lord, every day, celebrating the fact that you became flesh and blood, you became vulnerable, and you moved in the neighborhood to be with us. Amen.